Hi guys, this is the absolutely beautiful rose garden here at Kew Gardens. This rose garden was designed by English landscape architect William Nesfield in 1848, but it wasn't actually planted with roses until the 1920s. This rose garden now has 170 species and cultivars of rose, and it's at its peak right now. So let's take a look. The rose garden really is part of the gardens you must visit if you're here during the summer, with the peak season from June to July. Throughout this video I'm going to point out some of my favourite roses, as well as show you how we prune and care for some of the different types of rose we have here. This rose garden is one of the largest in the UK. It starts here on the one side by the water lily house, and runs all the way behind the palm house over to the other side. This area is the newest part of the rose garden, having been replanted with a selection of floribunda and dwarf shrub roses in early spring 2019. You can see how quickly it's established, and these roses are looking fantastic this year. This is a floribunda rose called Queen Elizabeth, producing these lovely, very showy blooms. Um, as a floribunda rose, it produces multiple flowers per stem. Um, and with both floribunda roses and hybrid teas, we prune them very hard each winter, reducing them in height by about half. Uh, this is in order to encourage as many new vigorous shoots and uh, a really good flower display for the, for the coming year. Floribunda roses and hybrid teas, which bear one single flower per stem, are most widely used for cut flowers and generally don't work too well in mixed borders. However, English shrub roses, which repeat flower, are much more versatile and work well in a variety of settings. This is a Gallica rose, Rosa Gallica var officinalis, well known for their beautiful, strongly scented flowers. These roses originate in southern Europe, over into Turkey, and were some of the first roses to be cultivated in Britain. As this is a straight species, they're typically not as strong growing as modern rose cultivars, and so the pruning on these is a bit lighter, typically pruning them by about a quarter, and removing just some of the older stems. Rosa Gallica var officinalis, also known as the apothecary's rose, is an important medicinal plant. The petals are antibacterial, taken internally to treat colds and a range of other conditions, as well as being used externally to treat infections and skin problems. This is one of my favourite roses in the rose garden at the moment. This is an English shrub rose called Princess Anne has these beautiful deep pink flowers fading with age, giving this lovely contrast. It has a really nice, light, sweet scent to it. All of the roses in the rose garden at Kew are pruned at the end of January, start of February. And this particular one was pruned by me. I'm really happy to see it flowering so well. As an English shrub rose, these are pruned down by about a third, maximum to a half. And if possible, we remove up to around a third of the older stems to encourage new growth from the base. One of the exceptions in terms of pruning time is a rose named Rosa Banksia, which is a lovely climbing rose which flowers in spring, April to May with lovely small white flowers, and it's almost completely thornless. There is also a lovely yellow variety called Rosa Banksia lutea. These are pruned right after flowering in early to mid-summer, to ensure that they can develop a good amount of flower buds for the following year. If you were to prune these roses in January, February, as we do with all the others, you would end up pruning off most of the flower buds, so it's important to remember this exception. This beautiful white rose called Madame Le Grasse de Saint Germain is an Alba rose. These varieties typically have a nice upright growth habit, and at Kew we prune them a bit lighter than the other shrubs to ensure we don't spoil their natural shape. 
we reduce the stem spur around a quarter in height and remove up to a third of the older stems from the base to encourage new vigorous shoots. Alba roses such as this one are known for their lovely sweetly scented flowers, but although these roses have been in cultivation for centuries, the hybrid parentage is unknown. With the exception of Floribundas and hybrid teas, which are grown specially for their flowers, with all of the roses here, when pruning, we are aiming to retain their natural shape and character, as restraining them by pruning them too hard, or by going against their natural growth habit, makes roses look very suppressed, often with ugly angular branching, which is seen all too often, as opposed to the elegant grace and curves that we desire. This is one of the, the showiest and most flamboyant of the roses in the rose garden. This is a, a variety called James Galway with these beautiful heavily doubled flowers, deep pink in the centre and uh, almost pure white at the edges creating this lovely blend of colours. Um, this is a, an English shrub rose. It's been grown as a shrub here but it in fact also makes a very good climbing rose. Having the iconic picturesque farmhouse as a backdrop for this rose garden really gives this garden so much charm and character. When this garden is in full flower, the air is filled with the most amazing fragrance and I'd encourage everyone to smell as many different rose varieties as possible, and you'll be surprised at the range of different aromas roses have. This is one of my favourite roses for scent. This is an English shrub rose called Tea Clipper and it has the most wonderful fruity tea-like fragrance. This rose just here is a moss rose named Rosa centifolia cristata. Moss roses are named because of the moss-like hairy growth shown here on the sepals of the flower buds. All moss roses are cultivars of a hybrid named Rosa cross centifolia, which derives from a mixture of parents including Rosa damascena. This small rose just here is Rosa spinosissima. This is a cultivar called Dunwich, and it's a type of wild rose. It has these lovely arching stems, and as the species name suggests, covered in spines. It has these really nice, simple, single white flowers. The pruning of this rose is very simple. Um, you don't want to spoil this natural arching shape, so you just remove a portion of the old stems from the base each year.
This wonderful rose is Rosa Lady of Shalott, one of the most popular roses in the rose garden and a real visitor favourite. It has these fantastic showy apricot orange flowers, which provide a nice contrast amongst all of the other roses. Just ahead of us is the final part of the Rose Garden, which is known as the History of the Rose. This area contains a selection of some of the oldest rose varieties, which many of the more modern cultivars may originate from. In general, rose pruning and maintenance is very simple, and they're very tough plants. As I said, we prune all of our roses here at the end of January. The main focus when pruning roses is to remove dead or diseased branches, then remove any crossing stems to ensure that stems don't rub, creating wounds, but also looking aesthetically nicer. And we always aim to open up and decongest the centre of the plants to create a nice vase shape, as they grow so quickly in the growing season that without doing this, the centre would become much too dense. The other important thing to consider when pruning roses is their natural growth habit. Some are much larger in stature, some have long arching branches, and some are small and compact, and it's important not to spoil their natural shape. If you want to extend the flowering season, diligent deadheading will encourage repeat flowering. However, if you're a fan of rose hips, leave the flowers to set fruit, and don't deadhead. Some varieties produce beautiful rose hips for winter interest. I hope you've enjoyed this walk around the rose garden at Kew Gardens. Please subscribe and check out all of the other videos on my channel and I hope you'll join me again soon.